Game Ranks presents another episode of Before You Buy, the show where we give you some straight-up gameplay and our thoughts on the latest games releasing. It's me, Jake, and today we're talking about Sniper Elite 4. Sniper Elite 4 is all about shooting Nazis. That's it. It's World War II, you're American sniper Carl Fairburn, and you're dropped into enemy territories to do some damage. That's it. There's no sweeping story, no fascinating characters, just gameplay here. And while the gameplay seems very familiar to Sniper Elite 3, a few crucial changes make this a much better game than its predecessors. The biggest change, Sniper Elite 4 is basically an open-ended, semi-open world game. There are larger open world maps this time around that make approaching conflicts completely non-linear, almost similar to the newest Hitman game, which I totally love. And in this game, it's really the player freedom that shines. Sniping is, of course, you know, the main event. It's the name of the game. But you're also given enough in terms of gadgets and close quarters capability to get the job done however you please. You can throw grenades, you can plant bombs, you can set time traps, you can hide in bushes, you can jump down from buildings, you can climb up, you can scale cliffs and basically traverse the environment however you really want. It's brutal, it's slow paced, but it can also be fast paced, but overall it's fun as hell. It doesn't quite feel like a top tier AAA game. It's a bit more, you know, low budget, but it really won't matter when you're playing. The game has eight campaign levels that are honestly extremely lengthy. Each campaign level is markedly different. It is basically its own little self-contained open world. And like I said, those campaign missions are extremely lengthy. You can spend like two hours in one of these campaign levels. The game drops you in with vague circles on your maps as like a rough guideline of where to go. And then the rest is completely up to you. If you're into these type of stealth games, maybe if you really liked Metal Gear Solid 5, this will be your jam. It's it's all about sitting around, plotting out, using your binoculars, seeing the guards, and then planning and taking your approach. But then of course there's always the circumstance where things can go wrong and then you gotta shoot your way out. If you get seen, you can also run away and hide and that's where the AI is probably not as realistic as you would expect. But otherwise, artificial intelligence has improved from a previous game. While you're running around the map, there are also side objectives that are pretty basic, but they do gain you a lot and thankfully they are kind of varied between the levels. And they're just a slight step above feeling like dumb busy work. That It basically is, but it's still fun to tackle them. But I gotta say the Italy setting is the most welcome change because, you know, honestly, it's an area not explored as often in popular World War II media. And thankfully, the game also manages to make each of the eight maps look and feel pretty different from cities, small towns, plains, coastal areas, mountains, and different times of day. But like I said in the intro, if you're coming for story, you shouldn't really bother. Carl Fairburn is just a generic soldier sniper man, and the game basically just kicks off with like a, today in World War II, we're going to do this now. Which is fine, it gets the job done, it's a setup, but what's there? is bare bones and passable. Now, of course, if you guys know anything about the Sniper Elite games, you probably know about the kill cam, the kill cam that shows your sniper kills and even your close quarters kills with brutal X-ray graphical intensity and all its glory. You're, you're smashing through skulls, you're exploding stomachs and lungs and hearts, and you're also shooting Nazis right in the balls. The biggest question I've been seeing a lot of people asking is, does that kill cam get old? Thankfully, no, honestly, I, I don't think it does. There's enough slight variations in the kill cam that keep it refreshing, and it doesn't always activate in certain instances, but still, you have the ability to turn it off, thankfully. But for me personally, playing a bajillion hours of Sniper Elite 3 and now a bunch of 4, the kill cam just still doesn't get old. I guess I just like headshotting Nazis. I don't know. It's also absolutely worth mentioning that you can play the campaign missions co-op via online, and it's as good as you would imagine. Sometimes the AI seems to have a hard time managing back and forth who to hunt down if you're split up, but it's not quite as far as broken, and it's all still fun as hell. There's also a competitive mode that didn't feel quite as strong as I was hoping, but then there's also a wave-based mode called called survival. Think of Gears of War's horde mode, but with just snipers. I honestly kind of love it. But the way the general single player gameplay is set up, unfortunately on normal mode, you don't feel pressured to use the massive amounts of tools and gadgets that are immediately at your disposal, which feels a little bit like a missed opportunity, but however, that can change. Hard mode is the better way to play, because while normal mode bounces back and forth between being eh, somewhat challenging and a total breeze, hard mode really ups the importance of the sniper mechanics, and that's where the game really becomes what it is, a sniping game. It doesn't make it completely one-to-one -one realistic, but it does add some realism to some of the gameplay elements, and it's honestly a really strong playthrough. But it's amazing how deeply different the game plays between difficulties. It's impressive that the game works for the average player, the hardened player, and then the achievement-loving masochists. For that, there's authentic mode, which, you know, with such an emphasis on hardcore realism and bullet, health, AI, and sniping, and weather mechanics, and gravity, and everything, I still think this mode can be enjoyable by people if you like taking a game slow. If you're nervous and you don't usually go for the hardest mode in a game, I think you should still dip your toes into this mode and give it a try. My one other criticism is I wish progression felt a bit stronger and fleshed out. There's a ranking system with weapon upgrades, unlocks, and skins, but it all just still feels very on the back burner. In certain games and games like this, I like to feel more of a stronger sense of progression. But besides that, if you like open world stealth, 
shooting, and some solid sniping mechanics, this is a game that's gonna keep you busy for a long time. While it's very simple, and to some people it may seem one note, that sandbox gameplay is strong and fun as hell. The gameplay will make even some of the more careless players methodical players overnight. But ladies and gents, that's Sniper Elite 4. You know how before you buy works, I'll give you some pros, some cons, the setup, and then my own personal opinion thrown in there as well. So now I wanna hear yours down in the comments. What do you think about Sniper Elite, especially since it's always been kind of a budget game series? Between three and four, it's really been coming in to its own. I, I want to know what you think. If you're a veteran of the series, how do you feel about 4? And if you've never played these games before, what are you thinking? You gonna try it? I think most stealth game fans will find a lot to like here, but that's just me. If you have any more questions about the game, I'll be down in the comments as much as possible, and I'll also be on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, at Jake Baldino as well. But you guys know the deal. Clicking that like button helps us out a ton. We really appreciate it. And subscribing if you're new is a good idea because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.